If I met a boy who wanted to be a girl, I would give that person advice. It doesn't matter if you're born a boy, you can just change to a girl. You could just be who you want, and that's it. The world has almost completely changed. The fact that I can be a rabbi in the largest reform synagogue in New England and stand on a bima and give sermons to huge crowds of amazing Jews and no one asks a question as to whether or not I'm fit to be a rabbi because I'm queer, that's amazing. That secret that I've been keeping had taken over my life and I realized that I couldn't keep that secret anymore. And I needed to at least like share that with someone to allow a little bit of like release. <laughs> I'm responsible for seeing the journey of a child from when they're a toddler all the way through when they're 18. Even though I identify as straight, I really wanted to help uh, develop another generation of Jews that would be less fearful and more inclusive. I was able to go and do training with a new organization called Keshet to become one of their first educators and trainers. To really have a community that's holy, we have to be able to create pathways and journeys for every member who wants to be a part of it. When Eli was as young as a year and a half or two, she would find her sister's headbands, jewelry, and accessorize. When Eli was five, she came to us and said that she only wanted to wear dresses. My first thought was, I don't have a dress in your size. I was hoping that that was gonna be the end of it. We're gonna be making art that represents gender as it exists in the world right now and gender as it could be in the ideal world. I came out when I was in high school, but I almost immediately went back into the closet. I could not imagine being an outcast. I didn't think I could go to my rabbi or my synagogue for support. I, I didn't see any visible gay people. I didn't, there was no one in my synagogue who was out. There weren't any families. There were two moms or two dads. So I didn't think it was possible. I didn't, I didn't feel like I fit into the Jewish community at all. When the community that I had grown up in found out that I'm queer, people stopped talking to my family. Many of them would just brush past us on Shabbat and not even say Shabbat Shalom to us. We just felt completely shunned and that hurt. And so my family had to leave there are many places in the Jewish world that see traditional gender roles as being essential to Judaism and therefore feel completely negative about even opening up the conversation around gender and sexuality. Even 10 years ago, it was extremely explicit how much LGBT individuals and families were excluded from communities. They were not allowed to be members places. Their conversations, their narratives were not part of the normal narratives of our community. I think gender is such a huge element of Judaism that people are afraid to challenge some of the norms. We are of your way. Keshet really created an opportunity for LGBT inclusion to be a central conversation for the Jewish future and the Jewish present. The first day that Eli was gonna to go to preschool in a dress, I was very nervous. I was worried about the kids bullying Eli. I was worried whether the teachers were gonna be accepting. Rabbi Lori Han Tapper approached me and suggested that we have Keshet come in and do a training at the school with the staff. We sort of didn't even know what the questions or the issues could be. And um, just having initial conversations with representatives from Keshet were really helpful for us as a school to think through what we needed to know. How do we make Eli comfortable? To this day, Eli has not had a negative situation at Yavna. In our modern Orthodox school, there was no space where students could come together and talk about issues around gender and sexuality. And so when he went to our school's administration to pitch the idea for this club, Sexuality, Identity, and Society Club, Kasha put me in contact with other similar clubs so we could talk and share resources and share ideas and ask questions and get feedback from each other. It was the first club of its kind in the modern Orthodox day school. Keshet also 
put me in touch with other teenagers and other staff members who are working on planning the first Shabbaton, the first weekend retreat for LGBTQ and ally Jewish high school students, which would be the first space that I was in that was specifically by and for queer Jews. Keshet and the Shabbaton made me feel as a queer person that I'm not alone. And the message of Keshet is that it's not exceptional to be inclusive. It's necessary, it's primary to what we are as a Jewish community. And they have really worked so hard to bring this from the margins into the mainstream of what it means to be Jewish today. And the Jewish world is so much better for it. Sex, sexuality, and gender. We need to figure out what the difference is between all of them. So sexuality is like what genders you're attracted to? I want synagogues to be the place where people are loved for whoever they are. Keshet's work is at the center and the heart of what it means to be building those kinds of Jewish communities. When I moved to town, I was looking for Jewish community, specifically queer Jewish community. I wanted to find something to do on Friday nights. I wanted to have a meal with people and I found Keshet. So every month Keshet would have this amazing Shabbat potluck um, that traveled from different neighborhoods and was in different people's living rooms. And I ended up in Jamaica Plain at this potluck, literally my first weekend in town, and I opened the door, and there's JoJo. It's totally crazy. Thank you, Kesha. <laughs> 10 years ago when I started going into primarily conservative Orthodox synagogues and asking rabbis to stage conversations around the question of LGBT Jews, they wouldn't. Now it's a part of the normal conversation. Where does this stuff come from? Anybody want to venture where this starts? If they're a girl, like you sign them up for like dance or ballet, and if they're a boy, you sign them up for sports. Pink stuff or blue stuff or... Catch it made a huge transformation for me as an individual and helped me grow as a human being and understanding others and also training me as a professional to create change and really talk to the kids about the relationship between sexuality and gender and begin to explore for them what gender is as a construct, how do we understand it, and what would it mean for someone who lived a life in which they didn't conform according to gender expectations. I want the kindergartner to see that there are teachers that they love and respect who are queer. And it's important to me to be that sort of model. Because then when you're working with the fifth grader, sixth grader, eighth grader, 10th grader, 12th grader, who is trying to figure out who they are, they know that they're not alone. I get to be a model for something that didn't exist when I was growing up, something that I so badly needed. And now I get to be that for others. There's nothing in the world that's better. I often have the feeling that we're doing work that is far beyond LGBTQ inclusion. It's about inclusion of everyone. I think it's nice to be able to say that I want to change the world, but really our most important thing is to say that I care about you as a human being. I feel inclusion in the Jewish community is so important for every person. If a child doesn't have a good experience in the Jewish community, they may never come back. It's important that they feel safe and comfortable because that person may end up being the next Jewish leader.